Hello everyone, my name is Nick and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can do double exposure and long exposure on your phone to create some really cool creative photography. A few weeks ago I made a video where I recreated some artwork from Hulu's mini series Little Fires Everywhere. Now people seem to really enjoy that video and I have actually had a suggestion from a subscriber JD to recreate another piece of Mia's artwork from the series which is a long exposure and double exposure photography but using my phone. Now I thought this would be a cool challenge so that's what I'm going to be trying to do today. Before I carry on with the video I just wanted to insert something here um, in light of the racial injustice that we're seeing in the world um, with police brutality and discrimination and murder, I wanted to say that I stand with you. I know this is a pretty small channel and this is an art channel so I don't delve too much into politics but I felt it was important that I acknowledge this. You know I'm a young white man and so I'm taking it upon myself to fulfil my duty as a human being to educate myself on my white privilege and I hope that those of you watching are doing the same. Uh, in the description I'll be leaving a link to the Black Lives Matter website where there are links to petitions you can sign, um, places to donate, educational resources. Um, this is because, you know, we all need to do our bit. Um, it's no longer enough just to not be racist. We have to be vocally and passionately anti-racist as all Black Lives Matter. Thank you, let's continue with the video. The first thing that I'm gonna be doing is look at the original photo from the series and break down the different layers and the photos that I'm gonna to need to be able to overlay to create the final image. So, to me, it looks like what you can see is in the very background is to me it looks a bit like clouds. It might not be but that's what it looks to me so I think that's what I'm going to do as one of my photos. Then there's obviously some sort of spider web um, because it's a very sort of spidery type um, photograph so I need some sort of photo of spider web. Then obviously we have the photos. Now I think it's a woman because um, she's wearing a dress or a vest top um, and obviously is doing lots of kind of different positions um, with her arms sort of like so it looks like she's got multiple arms like a spider so I just needed to create those um, photographs as well so I need to take them let's start by taking the photos so if you're going to be taking self portraits like I am what you're going to want to do is set up your phone now I don't actually have a specific phone tripod so instead what I've done is I took a regular tripod and just blue tacked my phone to it you then are going to want to put it onto a timer I put mine on 10 seconds and then I just was constantly referencing the original photographs from the series to see the sort of shapes and positions and the facial expressions that the model was using um, and trying to replicate some of these. Now I'm going to show you how you can do your own long exposure photography within the phone without the need of any external apps. What you're going to want to do is turn on your live photo mode at the top of the screen. Then you're going to take your photos and go into the gallery, hold on the photos and swipe up and you're going to see the effects tab. You're then going to scroll to the end and click on long exposure. And as you can see, it's turned your live video into a long exposure. So what you're gonna make sure is when you're taking the photos, there's movement happening in your photos. For me, I was moving my head, moving my hands, that sort of thing. But otherwise it's not gonna work if you're just saying still. I then just use a combination of long exposure and standard photos to create the rest of the photos ready to compile for my double exposure. Okay, so now I'm on my phone. I've got an iPhone 7, but this will work whether you're on iPhone or Android, um, as the app that we're gonna be using is Snapseed, and that's compatible with both. So the first thing I'm gonna do, probably won't make sense right now, but it will in a minute. I'm just gonna go onto Google, and I'm gonna search for a white screen. I'm gonna go onto images, um, and I'm gonna click on the white screen, and then I'm just gonna screenshot and then I'm just going to crop 
the screenshot so it's just pure white and I'm going to save that to my photos. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up Snapseed and this is kind of the main page and obviously you just tap and the first thing that I am going to do is I'm actually going to start editing the photos that I took before I start compiling them into one image. So I'm going to click open from device and I'm going to come down to little fires everywhere. So I'm going to take one of these photos um, and I'm going to open it up. So you want to choose the photos that you are going to be using in your um, double exposure. And once you've opened it up, this is what it looks like. So there's a load of sort of filters um, that you can choose from, but I don't really use any of them. I go into tools and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll and click on black and white. And there's different kind of presets you can choose from. Um, I quite like, I think dark works quite well for this or maybe contrast. If you swipe left or right, you can adjust the setting that you're on. I might just make it slightly brighter. Click the tick, go back to tools, and then I'm gonna go on crop. I'm just gonna crop out, you know, my shelves on the side and the top as well, and click the tick. Also, I'm gonna go onto this first option, which is tune image. And again, left and right, adjust the um, strength of the effect. And then if I scroll up, you can see these other options. So contrast, I might up the contrast slightly. Ambience, I might also do the same to that. Highlights, it probably would have been best to be honest if I took this on a plain white wall, but I quite like the texture of the wall that I had. So I don't think it's the end of the world. And then the shadows, I'm just going to deepen the shadows slightly as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to export and you want to click export. Now this exports it as an actual JPEG, which you can then add in um, an overlay later on when we start assembling our double exposure. So you want to click export and it will do that. Now what you want to want to do is you want to go through all of the photos um, that you are going to be using and you want to do the same thing. So you want to make them black and white. Uh, you don't have to do it in black and white, but that's what the um, Little Fires Everywhere photo was. So I'm going to be trying to sort of replicate that. Again, you just open a new image. This time I'm just going to import the photo of the clouds like I did before. Make it black and white, adjust the brightness the contrast etc etc and export it and you repeat that for all of the photos that you've taken i couldn't actually find a decent enough spider web at my house to take photos of that sounds really weird so i went on to pexels which is a royalty free image website um, and i searched and i found a photo of a spider web on that and then just saved that to my camera roll and that's what i'll be using for the spider web texture once you've edited all the photos that you are going to use, so that's a nice photo of me there, open up that white screenshot that we took before, okay? And this is going to act as our background that we can then overlay the different images on top. Tools, scroll down and double exposure. We're going to press that. On the bottom here, you want to click the little kind of mountains and cross. I've actually made an album um, which I've saved all of my edited images into. I'm going to start off by adding in the cloud. So you're just going to select it. At the moment, um, it doesn't look like you've done anything, but if you come down to the middle sort of like swatches, it looks like in the middle, here are your blending modes. So you have default, have lighten, darken, add, subtract and overlay. Now, to be honest, depending on the photo that you're layering on, it's a complete just sort of like um, play around with what, which looks good. For the first one though, I think I'm just going to leave it as default. And then the kind of water droplet is where you can adjust the opacity. So I'm going to have it slightly faded about that. And then once you've done, you just click the tick. What I would suggest is while you're working on this, sometimes Snapseed just might like crash on you. Um, so if you click on export and then you click save, what this does is it saves it as if you'd save like a Photoshop file so then you can edit it so if it crashes you can just reopen it and then edit it and add to it etc rather than just exporting it as a flat image like the export option does go back to tools double exposure and i'm going to add in the spider web 
And what you can do is you can rotate and zoom and do all sorts of things and then play around with the blending mode. Overlay works quite well, I think. And then I'm just gonna adjust the opacity so it's not quite as strong. And then you literally just repeat this for all of the layers and you keep going until you like what you've got. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I feel like it's slightly been washed out. And so I'm gonna go to tune image and I'm just gonna darken it slightly. I'm gonna bring back some of that contrast. I'm gonna up the highlights slightly and bring down the shadows just to kind of get a bit more contrast, the ambience. And I think I'm gonna do a few more layers and then I'll be nearly there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to crop it. I'm going to crop it down because the original one is slightly more square. I don't want to crop out the hands, but I just want to bring it up a bit. So here was the original image from the show and here is my recreation. So as you can see, they are not identical, but that's practically impossible because it's not the same subject um, and you can't take the same photo twice, really but I think I kept the essence of mine um, as the same as the original, and I think they both have that sort of spidery type sort of feel. So I'm really happy, I'm really actually quite shocked that actually you can do this kind of double exposure and um, long exposure combination on your phone. If you would like to, uh, you can check out the last Little Fires video that I made where I set fire to one of my paintings to take some photos, which was pretty cool. Um, and so yeah, there'll be a link in the card above and in the description below and um, the, um, what do you call it? The little thing at the end. The end, end screen card thing. Like I've mentioned before, I'd love to turn this recreating artwork from film and TV into a series. So if you have any suggestions of any other TV shows or films that you'd like me to recreate some of the artwork from, then please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up as I really appreciate it. And consider subscribing for weekly art, film and photography videos every Sunday. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye.